Hello, this is Rudy Giuliani back with another episode of Rudy's Common Sense. And as you can see, it is located in Palm Beach today. And it's located in Palm Beach because we are getting ready for what I think is going to be, well, it should get the Academy Award, I believe, from the excerpts that I've seen. But if my friend Dinesh takes the Academy Award, I will never talk to him again. Because, come on, that's like taking the Pulitzer Prize, right? <laughs> but in any event, we are very honored to have with us Dinesh D'Souza, who has um, done so many movies, so many books that have been bestsellers, bestsellers even though they tried to ban them, bestsellers even though they tried to put them in the back of the bookstore, bestsellers even though they tried to investigate them. Uh, this is a brilliant man a great writer, and a real patriot. And from what I've seen of the movie, I haven't seen the whole thing yet, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to knock your socks off if you have an open, even a slightly open mind. Dinesh, thank you for being with us. Hey, it's a real pleasure. And I'm really looking forward to this film getting out there because uh, it is the first um, uh, film, I think, that documents a volume of election fraud that is quite sufficient to tip the balance in the presidential election. You know, Janish, I think you did something from the parts that I've seen that we didn't either do or have the time to do when uh, Jenna and myself and Boris were representing the president. We concentrated on so many areas of fraud because, you know, there were about 10 or 12, right, that uh, nobody got the picture of just one that would be enough. What you did was you surgically focused on one thing and you blew it up. So tell us first, how did you come up with the idea of doing this? And then how did you pick the subject that you used? Because I mean, you could have, uh, you, you could have gone after the uh, phony paper ballots. You could have gone after the 68,000 people under 18 years old who, who voted. Uh, oh, so many things. Why did you pick on this? And how did you come up with the idea of it? Well, my, my wife and I are friends with Catherine Engelbrecht and Greg Phillips, who are the two principals of a election intelligence organization called True the Vote. They've been around since about yes. 2010, doing very good work. I noticed that during the election time, they were kind of silent, which seemed to me odd. And so we kind of checked in with them and said, guys, what are you up to? And they were like, listen, you know, we think that because of the enormous changes of rules under COVID, the mail-in ballots, the mail-in drop boxes, that if the Democrats are going to cheat, we think that's where they would cheat the most. And so what we're going to do is we're trying to figure out a way that we can bust them. And so they came up with an ingenious way, which is simply to buy the uh, cell phone geo-tracking of all cell phones in a certain area uh, in fact, in key cities, in key states where the election was decided. And so what they did is they bought the greater Atlanta area of Georgia. They bought uh, Phoenix, Maricopa County. They bought Detroit. They bought Milwaukee. And they bought the greater <laughs> Philadelphia area. And uh, now I got to say a word a little about geotracking because essentially geotracking is this technology uh, that enables you to measure the movement of a cell phone. Our cell phones contain apps. Uh, and these apps allow our location to be pinpointed at a given moment in time. And so what True the Vote said is, let's, let's look at this data. By the way, 10 trillion pings of data. They've got the largest database uh, on the 2020 election of anybody in the world. And they said, let us search this data. Let's write an algorithm to find mules. Now, what's a mule? A paid professional operative who's delivering fraudulent votes uh, to a mail and drop box. Let's try to find mules who go to 10 or more drop boxes. So you can see they set the bar really high. Because I mean, if a guy goes to eight drop boxes, they're not going to count you. You're the only counting the most egregious, industrious mules who are going to 10 or more drop boxes. And even with that high bar, we found 2,000 mules. 2,000 mules in these areas alone. And these 2,000 mules are responsible together for at least 400,000 illegal ballots. Uh, well, let's go back a moment. Tell me the cities they picked. 
Atlanta, you told me, Maricopa County. Phoenix, yes. Uh, a little bit of Yuma for complex reasons we don't need to go into. Oh, I, I, I know why. Uh, Detroit, yeah. Milwaukee. And finally, the greater Philadelphia area. So only but, those, not even the whole states, just those cities. But you know what you did was, I think, uh, I don't know if they figured this out, but the Democrats decided some point before the election to focus not on the whole country, but on the Democratic areas they controlled that were totally corrupt and where they could go into court, for example, in Philadelphia and get an order for Corey Lewandowski and Pam Bondi to examine the ballots and have a sheriff not enforce it for two hours until it got reversed. Or where they could go and have a court define every candidate should have a person present at the counting of votes, but the court defined present as just being there, but not looking at any votes. And one judge who dissented said, well, basically you're there as a potted plant. (laughs) What's the point of being there? So uh, the point is they went to places. Atlanta is a crooked democratic city. Detroit is legendary. Milwaukee is And Philadelphia maybe is number two to Chicago. So they picked the right places in advance where probably there was cheating elsewhere. But here it was going to be out of control because nobody cared. Nobody watched them. And probably if they got arrested, they'd have been set free by Soros selected DAs in every one of those places. So then what did they what did they do? With how did they spot the cell phones? What how, that's very hard to understand how they got the the exact cell phones. Okay, so believe it or not, um, the um, the geo tracking of phones you can buy on the open market. Now, when I say that, you can't buy it at Walmart, but there are forty one aggregators nationwide who collect this data. When people uh, download apps into their phone, they perhaps unwittingly give permission for their data to be ransacked. And so this data is sold all the time. You know, if you or I go into a mall, we get a notification there's a special in the Apple store. Well, how do they know you're in the mall? Well, they're geo-tracking your phone. You do a go on vacation, you get off the airport, you walk, you're in Naples, you get a notification. This, it's going to be sunny and 75 in Naples. How do they know you're in Naples? They're geo-tracking your phone. Completely legal. Completely legal. Completely. Absolutely. Right. So I could go on myself today and try to find uh, 41 of these aggregators and geo track phones based on categories. Absolutely. And if you, and let's say you were to geo track my phone, it would not only show that I'm here now at home sitting in front of my television, but that I woke up here. I went to a coffee shop. I went to the studio to record my podcast. I had lunch with a friend and then I came back. The, the, the geo tracking shows not only the location, but the movement of the phone. And so once you're able to uh, once you have this data, what you end up with is the identities. Now, when I say the identities, not the names, but the cell phone IDs of these 2000 mules. Uh, Every cell phone has a unique digital fingerprint, the cell phone ID. And that allows law enforcement, if they want, to go get the names of these guys. Now, they then focused on what would be the high volume areas, which was very smart, just like it was very smart to pick only those cities and not try a place like Oh, Sioux City, Iowa, or so. How did they distinguish between the two hundred and then the more than two hundred? So what they did is they were looking for people who went to multiple drop boxes, and and they set the bar very high: ten or more drop boxes. Why? Because look, it is conceivable you could have an innocent reason to go to two drop boxes. Let's say you went to one drop box and you dropped in your ballot and you were walking by the second drop box and you simply had to tie your shoelace. So you stopped there, but you weren't (laughs) doing anything nefarious. You just happened to stop there. So you don't want to get these kinds of accidental people. You want someone who has no good reason to go to that many drop boxes, unless it were to dump illegal ballots. So you set the bar really high. You won't catch all the mules. If somebody goes to six drop boxes, you won't get them but you're going to get the most egregious mules. And, and so the 2,000 mules number is a ridiculously low undercount 
of the total number of mules. And the drop boxes can also be found through the geo tracking. Yes, because, you know, let's just say that there's a drop box outside a library and somebody walks past the drop box to the library. You can see that. You're not going to catch that guy. You, in order to find him, that person has to stop at the drop box and then return to their car or to some other location and then go to another drop box. So in other words, we're talking about a technology that's accurate to between 12 and 18 inches. So this is not a very random Ooh. technology. It's extremely precise and extremely accurate. This took a lot of work, though, uh, uh, to find those drop boxes. You had to follow people and see them go to a drop box and then put that drop box in your program, right? Right. You just set the program to pick people who are at 10 or more drop boxes. Uh, and the other interesting thing um, is where they get the ballots, because the mules don't come up with their own ballots. They get the ballots from what we in the movie call vote stash houses. And what are the vote stash houses? Basically, they're left wing organizations, many of them nonprofits, NGOs. They're deeply embedded in the inner city. These are the people who collect the ballots. They are the ones who pay and deploy the mules to go deliver them very often in the middle of the night. And they're called vote. We call them vote stash houses. That's our colloquial term. But the point being that the, the mule goes to the stash house. He is given a, a, basically a backpack or a satchel full of ballots. Now, here's what's really interesting is no, the mules don't go. You think they could save themselves time, go to a drop box, throw in 500 ballots. Big deal. You're done for the day. But no, the reason is the election worker will come in the next morning. They will open the drop box to fill out the custody documents. They'll notice a massive spike of ballots. They'll know something's wrong. So the mules are clever. They're told three ballots here, five ballots there, 10 ballots in the next drop box. This is why they go to so many drop boxes to conceal the fact that they're dumping a large number of votes, but they spread it around so as not to raise suspicions or eyebrows. So, uh, so therefore, they would have captured a record of that. Yes. So now they, so now, now they have a record once they have their program together of the mule goes to the vote uh, stash house, right? Or st and he gets the ballots that he needs. They've already been made out presumably for Biden or nine to one for Biden. And instead of going to one drop box and dropping off 500, they'll spend all night dropping off five and 10 and 15 in different drop boxes. So you see them going to many places at night. Exactly. And I, that's exactly I, right. I mean, that is, that is uh, from the point of view of a trial lawyer, that's devastating evidence. Right. And now and now let's sort of clinch the deal here because the geo tracking evidence is supported by video evidence. Now, uh, True the Vote was able to assemble through public information records, completely legal, four million minutes of surveillance video. And I want to be really clear. This is not video that some dude, you know, took off his truck by turning on his iPhone we're talking about the official surveillance video of the states themselves. Four million minutes. Official video from the state because the state had a video to protect these drop boxes, theoretically, correct? Yes. You wish that all the states had done it, but many of them did not. And therefore, uh, True the Vote and I would like to have video from all the five states we have mostly video from Georgia, some video from Arizona, some video from Michigan, but no video from Wisconsin, because although they said they were going to have surveillance video, they did not do it. So even though the election rules say you should have video, they basically just pleaded COVID. We didn't get around to it. And so the video is not available everywhere, but where it is available, it's unbelievably revealing. And I think you're going to see, Rudy, that it's the climax of the movie, because, you know, how often do you get to see the criminals breaking into Fort Knox? How often do you get to see the criminals at work? It's like flashing back to the scene of the crime and watching it with your open eyes. The only place you got to see it was in Atlanta, Georgia, when they closed down the center, threw everybody out and counted 135,000 ballots, 110,000 
for Biden and 15,000 for Trump and excluded every witness. And of course, uh, the governor and the attorney general uh, said that was a perfect election. That's the only place where you'll have such a video. But of course, they discounted it as, uh, what's their favorite word? Disinformation, right? Or debunking. We'll be back in just one minute. Think your homeowner's insurance covers home title fraud? <laughs> Think again. And neither does your common identity theft program. The FBI calls home title fraud one of the fastest growing crimes, which is why you need to go to HomeTitleLock.com, America's leader in home title protection. Here's the problem. The deed to your home is the only document that proves you own it. And the deeds to all of our homes now are online. In minutes, a criminal can find and forge your name off the deed to your home and refile as the new owner, like Jeff, who spent a fortune in legal fees after a thief forged himself onto the deed to Jeff's home and took out loans. Jeff didn't have home title lock then. He does now. Or Deborah, who thought our common identity theft service would protect her. Then a criminal got onto the deed to a home and had her evicted. Deborah has home title lock now. HomeTitleLock.com is your peace of mind and the deed to your home is protected visit hometitlelock.com hometitlelock.com we're back with Dinesh uh, Souza with uh, revelations that um, this may describe maybe the worst scandal in the history of this country if it isn't it ties for the worst uh, to 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 do this to an election is so anti-american that I think every one of our founding fathers must be turning over in their grave. And some of them saying, you know, I knew it would happen someday. And that's why we've got to change it. And this movie is, I hope, going to change it. So uh, do you actually get to interview any of these people? Yeah, we do have an interview with a mule in the movie. This is a mule in Arizona. She was busted and she decided to cooperate with the authorities. That's why she could be in the movie we, she did ask that for her safety, we disguise her face and voice a little bit, so we do do that. But let me, if I may, point out how the geo-tracking and the video in this movie works beautifully together. So let's say, for example, you're geo-tracking Dinesh, and I'm a mule, and I'm going at 3.57 a.m. in the morning to a drop box. I dump in some ballots. And by the way, Rudy, what you're going to see on the video is, you know, um, uh, that the mules have gloves. Uh, and the reason they have gloves is they are trying to make sure they don't leave any fingerprints on the ballots. And um, so they are looking to the left and right to make sure no one sees them. The other interesting thing is that as the ballots are going into the drop box, they take photos of them, which may seem like a really odd thing to do. Yeah, yeah, right. Does. It's not a selfie. It's not like I voted. They're, they're, they want to be able to prove that they were there and they did the job. This is how they get paid. The photo is a verification that they carried out the task. So a lot of the mules are not even ideological. They're in it for the money. They're Antifa BLM types who are paid typically $10 a ballot. And uh, how, how many of them, can you, can you identify uh, uh, many of them? Do we know who they are or is it just pictures of them? Well, you can in the in the videos you can see the mules. I mean, and and as I mentioned, True the Vote has their cell phone IDs, so law enforcement could figure out their identities very quickly. Um, the remarkable thing is that you can see the geo tracking of a mule, a guy who's going from one ballot box to another ballot box to another ballot box. And like I say, there's not video everywhere, but where you do have video, you can then go to the video to that exact location and that exact time, and there's the mule. You see him. And you see him in a hoodie, and you see him uh, dropping these ballots in there, and then you see him jump in his car and head off to the next drop box. So it's really powerful to see that the geo tracking points to the video. The video supports the geo tracking. And look, uh, it, it removes all doubt that that cell phone was at that location. You can actually see the guy with the ballots. Well, this is, of course, what stopped bank robbery. They put cameras in banks. And bank robbers got smart enough to realize 
It wasn't pretty safe to rent, rob a bank. Go rob something else. Uh, so these people, many of them, are on camera. You have all this identifying data from the geo tracking, and it would be relatively easy for local police or the FBI to pick them up, and basically just with paper and documents prove they're guilty of voter fraud. Absolutely. Now, another angle to this, which is another level of illegality, is let's remember that some of these left wing organizations, not all, but some are 501c3 organizations. They are forbidden by law, by the IRS, from engaging in partisan electioneering. They can generally exhort people to go out and vote, but they are not allowed uh, to, uh, to mobilize on behalf of any party or candidate. Uh, and, and yet, evidently, what we have are these nonprofits, which are bankrolled by the left, that are organizing the whole mule operation. So if it's Antifa and, and Black Lives Matter, are they involved? Yes, they are. And we have a very powerful a moment in the movie where uh, Greg Phillips, who is uh, the guy who's done this geo-tracking data, he says, hey, I got an ingenious idea because there were BLM and Antifa riots in Atlanta at exactly the same time as the geo-tracking data we bought, because they bought data in the, in the weeks leading up to the election, early voting period, right? So what they decided to do, there's an, there's an organization worldwide called ACLED, A-C-L-E-D, and ACLED monitors the cell phones of violent riders all over the world. And that data is available. You can just look it up. So what Greg Phillips did is he said, let me match my geo-tracking data, the mules, against the ACLED database in Atlanta to see if our mules show up in the violin riders. And sure enough, what you find is an overlap, not a one-to-one -one overlap, but nevertheless, a whole bunch of the mules are in the violent BLM and Antifa riots. So that's where the Democrats and the left hire their thugs to do this kind of work. Well, I mean, the connection between the three would be that George Soros is, as far as we can tell, the biggest uh, donor to BLM, biggest donor to Antifa, and biggest donor to the Democratic Party. Yeah, we, we look for the money flow that is coming from the left into these nonprofits. Now, to be honest, there are things we don't know. And, uh, you know, for example, as you said, there are things that law enforcement can do that we can't do. If law enforcement takes these cell phone IDs, they get a warrant, they can, they can go to the cell phone provider and unmask these mules. And then they, you interview them, who paid you, who put you up to it, uh, who organized this. I mean, that would seem to be the logical next step of this movie. Whether or not it will happen, I don't know. Some of these areas, of course, are, have Democratic attorneys general, Democratic secretaries of state, but not all. I mean, obviously, Brnovich in Arizona is a Republican attorney general. Obviously, we know that there is Raffensperger, who has said he's investigating this, but how seriously he is doing it, I do not know. And then, of course, there's always the federal government, the Department of So-Called Justice. Uh, they should be investigating all of this. But I but think of it this way, if the if the premise of the film is right and if the volume of the fraud is at this at the extent that we say. And by the way, in the climactic scene in the movie, we look at the impact of the fraud, not as in a general sense, but in every single state. Let's look at the fraud in Arizona. Would it have tipped that state? Let's look at the fraud in Georgia. Would it have tipped that state? We literally redo the electoral map by subtracting the fraudulent votes. So when you look at the results, which are, by the way, very eye opening, I can see why a guy like uh, like um, uh, like, well, the Biden people in the DOJ are going to be a little hesitant uh, in uh, wanting to sort of blow this wide open because blowing it wide open is going to point attention directly at them. I'm not going to ask you the climactic question. Does it change the results in some of the states? Because let's, ha let's have people watch the movie. I just want to tell the people in those states that there are 10 or 12 other areas of proven fraud that could easily be added to that number that no matter what that number is would probably put it over the top. Right now, there was just a report in Wisconsin by a very distinguished former judge in Wisconsin 
finding a couple of hundred thousand votes to be totally illegal. There's been a report in Georgia, very, very similar, that Raffsenberger is now investigating. It's been revealed that Raffsenberger had a report 10 days after the election explaining that the election was rife with fraud. That's all the while he was saying it was perfect. He had on his desk an opposite report from his own organization that he hid until it was revealed three weeks ago in an FOIA uh, request. So in each one of these places, you have thousands and thousands of other ballots, 68,000 people under the age of 18 who voted in Georgia. <laughs> That's the election. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure some of these put you over the top. Some may or may not. But I want to keep that as a climax for the movie. And uh, Denise, I can't thank you enough um, oh, for everything you've done for our republic. This may be the, the greatest. And the, and, the, and, the most, and the most courageous, because all of us who even say the word stolen election, we're now in fear of being labeled as terrorists by the uh, Ministry of Disinformation. It's such, you know, this whole idea that this was, the most, um, this was the most secure election in history, I do not think that any rational individual, regardless of their politics who watches this movie, will take that statement seriously after leaving the theater or after the credits roll at the end because that is a ridiculous statement in view of the fraud that is demonstrated for you to see with your own two eyes. So I'm very excited about the film. I will say that because of censorship, I've had to create a, a, a different way to see the film. It's not in the normal places. Oh, yeah, tell me how, how we see it. You got to go to the website, which is 2000mules.com, 2000mules.com, the number 2000. And that'll give you five different ways to see the film. You can obviously, there's a virtual pr premiere coming up on Saturday, May 7th. Uh, and that's really cool. It's out of a great studio in Vegas. You watch the movie. There's a live Q&A to follow. The movie will be available for digital download after that, but only on uncancelable platforms. And of course, you can order DVDs and there are other ways to watch the movie. You got to get it from the website, which is 2000mules.com. So it will not be in a movie theater. No, it's been, it, we had a limited theatrical release on Monday, May 2nd and Wednesday, May 4th. But those seats are gone. I mean, those are those theaters are chock full. Uh, and so now the best way to see it is Saturday, May 7th, virtual premiere, go to 2000mules.com. Does the Ministry of Disinformation have agents taking pictures like the FBI did at the mafia wedding? <laughs> you know, I wonder about that. That's funny. Um, the uh, I think what scares them is not disinformation. What really scares them is information. <laughs> well, remember, we're in 1984. So disinformation means information and information means disinformation. Yes. Well, and I don't have to tell you good luck. Uh, we're going to do everything we can. And I'm sure everyone who agrees with me, of which there are many, are going to do everything we can to get this movie to every single American. Thank you so much. God bless you. Not long ago, Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow, and his team fit me for my very own MyPillow. They also introduced me to their wide assortment of other incredible products, like their mattress topper, their sheets, towels, slippers, and more. Sleep is incredibly important to me, and I can assume for all of you. It's time you give MyPillow a try and see for yourself. Listeners have helped build MyPillow into the incredible company it is today, and Mike Lindell wants to give back to all of you. You can get great discounts on MyPillow products by going to MyPillow.com right now and seeing each of the specially priced items, including those in the Radio Listener Special Square. You're going to see rotational offers up to 66% off on products like their pillows, mattress topper, Giza sheets, but also new products like their slippers, weighted blankets, robes, and waffle blankets. All MyPillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee. Enter promo code RUDY for these great specials. That's MyPillow.com and use the promo code RUDY. This is Rudy Giuliani back with you on uh, Rudy's Common Sense. You've just heard that uh, maybe... 
maybe the best interview I've ever been part of in the sense of important to my country, important to our republic, important to saving our sacred right to vote. I mean, in, in, a, in, a, in a week in which they're taking away a right of free speech with something that you could never have heard of in America, ever, 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 a ministry of disinformation. I mean, that happened in Soviet Russia and China. It happens in Orwell's 1984 to warn us about a communist takeover of the West. And, and, now, and now we have a movie that, as I said, I've seen part of it and I've talked to people who have watched it, totally professional movie, by a very distinguished uh, author, producer, and just pure genius who's been defamed. And, but every time he produces a movie, they can't find a single thing wrong with it, so they censor it. They're not going to show this movie in the movie theaters. That's what they used to do in Nazi Germany. People have a right to see this and make up their own mind about it. This is the United States of America. They have an absolute right to judge this movie from themse for themselves. This movie is going to be made up of films, interviews, you should be allowed to decide. If you want any proof that Biden is running a fascist state, this is the proof. Watch the movie, 2000mules.com. 2000mules.com. We will spend the next, however long it takes, to find thousands of ways for you to see it. And then you make up your mind. I didn't even ask him the conclusion. I don't need to. I got the conclusion sitting in my den. But I want you to listen to it and you decide and communicate with me. Communicate with me on RudyGiulianiCS.com. Go to the remarks section. Tell me what you think in advance. Tell me what you think when you see it. And then tomorrow night, I'm going to have the privilege of being at Mar-a-Lago with Dr. Maria and several others, Jenna Ellis, and we're going to get to see it fully. And I'll report on it to you as soon as I see it. God bless that we have people like Dinesh D'Souza and you. And God bless America.